We have a chain of mass m that is slipped on a smooth round cone. We need to find the tension of the chain if the whole system is rotating with an angular velocity of omega. So whenever we need to find the tension in a chain, we it's always best to do it by taking a small part of the chain and find the forces on that small part. So in this case, let's assume Let's take a small elemental part of this whole chain and figure out the forces on that. So if you see on the vertical on this plane, so you will see that mg force is downwards and there's a normal reaction which is in this direction. So the tension will be in up uh, towards you and behind you so it won't be visible in this figure. So that we will see in this figure. So this is the top view of the same chain and here you will see there are two more forces that is tension. So on the left part and on the right part of that small element. And you can see that the component of this dn, horizontal component that will be dn cos theta. So that also exists in this plane. So these are the forces that are in horizontal plane. In vertical plane, you have dmg downwards and dn sine theta upwards. So that's what we'll do. Our approach is to break it into horizontal forces and vertical forces and write f is equal to ma on each of those planes. So one thing here is how do we relate this tension with the dn? So for that, this is a standard result whenever we have such elements where there is some tension in the chain. So I'll, so I'll explain how this works. So we have taken a small element. So let's say that element subtends an angle alpha with the center of the circle. So half angle obviously is alpha by two and the tension will make an angle alpha by two with the horizontal. This is geometry because these are tangents. If this angle is alpha by two, this is also alpha by two. So fx is clearly zero and fy because of the tension will be two t sine alpha by two. And because we have taken an element, it's very small element. So alpha is very small. So we can assume sine alpha by two to be alpha by two. So two will get canceled and that will be equivalent of t alpha. So the force because of the tension on a small part of a chain is comes to be T alpha. And what is the mass of that small part of the chain? So that is dm into this angle upon total angle into total mass. So that will be alpha upon two pi into total mass. Or you can think of like this. So length of this part that is R alpha upon total perimeter that is 2 pi r times m. So that is how we calculate the dm on this small element and we will need it because we are going to calculate the dmg here. So this is a standard result for force in this direction. So I'm seeing y direction here in this xy plane due to tension on a ring element. So we are going to use that here. So we have taken this uh, whole angle as alpha. So that's why same as here. And on this elemental ring, because it's rotating in a circle, the acceleration is towards center. So the net force of these three forces will be towards center. And that is causing the acceleration of A. So we'll write F is equal to MA in our horizontal plane. So T alpha which we calculated here, this is because of the tension, because of these two tensional forces, the force towards down is T alpha minus Tn cos theta is equal to M into A. So M is Tm and A is omega square R. Now, how do we find Dn? So for that, we'll see the forces in vertical direction. So Dmg, because vertically the forces are balanced, the movement of the chain is only in horizontal direction. So vertically dmg is equal to dn sin theta. Since f is equal to zero vertically, so from here we will eliminate dn. So this will give us 
t alpha as a function of everything else which we know so dm also we will replace with this and resolving you will get the tension in terms of what is given in the problem 